Hey, I'm Kirsty. I'm going to be talking about some urban survival food, roses and monkey grass, something you can find in towns and cities for survival situations. <laughs> This is a rose. Wild roses are so different than what we're used to seeing in the store. Even this looks nothing like a wild rose. A wild rose has about five white petals and is viney and grows tons of red rose hips. But the ones in the store are usually bred for their size, so they don't even smell like anything. If you get a big rose from the store and it smells good, they most likely sprayed it with something so it would smell like something. This is not so cultivated for its size. It smells very strongly. I think it's a Lincoln rose, not positive. There's so many different kinds of roses, but the darker the color of the petals, the more aromatic it'll be. And the more aromatic it is, the more flavorful it is. It'll taste like it smells. So if your rose smells like nothing, it'll taste like nothing. Rose petals can be used for all kinds of things, making jellies, candies, um, drinks, tea. Um, you can put it on desserts for looks and some flavor. But it's very pretty to have rose petals on a cake. You want to discard any white portion of the petal because that'll be bitter. Tastes like a rose. I like it a lot. Rose petals can be added to salads to spice it up. What's prettier in a salad than red rose petals? Um, it can be used to flavor wine, liquor, um, tea, all kinds of different beverages. Any true rose has rose hips that turn red and you can eat them. They're packed with vitamin C, but you can't eat them without processing them first. There's a whole um, process that you need to go through in order to remove the seeds out of the rose hip. The seeds are covered in little hairs. That's the original itching powder. The aboriginals said that if you eat the rose seeds, you would get itchy bottom disease, and nobody wants that. The rose hips are packed with vitamin C. They have 50 times more vitamin C than citrus fruits. You can make jams, chutneys, syrups, sauces, and tea from the rose hips. The shoots of the rose are edible too, and you can find all kinds of rose recipes online. Just give it a search and see what you find. And that's all I have for rose. This is monkey grass, or lily turf. Its Latin name is Liriope. I think the last two names are much prettier than the name monkey grass. But like most grasses, your body can't really digest it. You could eat it, like it's not toxic, but your body can't really digest it. The roots, however, you can cook or dry and eat. You will get more medicinal value if you dry it as opposed to cook it. Drying it or candying it as opposed to cooking it preserves its nutrients a lot better. Lily turf increases white blood cells and improves immune function. It promotes and extends the life of antibodies. It's an anti-inflammatory, anti-allergenic, and an expectorant. The roots of the lily turf are used as a tonic in Korea to increase stamina. So it's a pretty cool plant that grows everywhere in urban places. I'm not sure where you'd find it wild. It might be. If you need urban survival plants, monkey grass is going to be one of your plants to find, as well as roses. The, the berries of the monkey grass are not really edible. It's just a seed wrapped in some skin, basically. I wouldn't recommend eating it. The flowers may be edible, but I'm not sure, so I wouldn't suggest doing it unless you have a professional helping you out. And that's all I have for monkey grass. Oh.
Hold on. I don't feel like I'm doing anything with my face. Doing anything that I can't do anything about it. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, oh. <laughs> Lily Turf. My breath smells like roses. <laughs> 